Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into a critical issue that has significant implications for regional security and international relations. The Spratly Islands in the South China Sea have long been a hotbed of geopolitical tension. Despite China's extensive military buildup in the region, they face a significant hurdle. The South China Sea is one of the world's most strategic waterways, with over $3 trillion worth of trade passing through annually. The Spratly Islands, a collection of more than 100 small islands and reefs, are situated in the heart of this region. Multiple countries, including the Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, have laid claim to parts of the Spratlys. The Spratly Islands are not just about territorial claims, they are a strategic outpost to project power and secure maritime interests. Over the past decade, China has embarked on an ambitious campaign to build artificial islands and military installations in the Spratlys. These installations include runways, ports, and radar systems, aimed at solidifying their presence in the region. China's military strategy heavily relies on air power. The ability to deploy fighter jets to the Spratly Islands would provide China with significant advantages, including enhanced surveillance, rapid response capabilities, and a stronger deterrence against rival claimants. However, despite the construction of airstrips on several islands, including Fiery Cross Reef, Subi Reef, and Mischief Reef, there are critical obstacles that prevent China from effectively using these airstrips for their fighter jets. One of the main challenges is the logistics of supporting fighter jet operations in such a remote location. Fighter jets require extensive maintenance, regular refueling, and a steady supply of ammunition and spare parts. The distance from mainland China to the Spratly Islands ranges from 600 to 1,000 miles, making it difficult to maintain a constant supply line. Additionally, the harsh maritime environment poses further complications. Saltwater corrosion can damage aircraft, while unpredictable weather conditions can disrupt operations. These logistical challenges significantly hamper China's ability to sustain a continuous fighter jet presence in the Spratlys. There are three possible reasons. The first is political. China does not want to inflame tensions with the Southeast Asian claimants by deploying combat jets to its artificial islands. Given that over the past few months China has doubled down on its claims and provocatively sent survey ships and CCG vessels into the ease of Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and the Philippines, this seems unlikely. As China seems unperturbed by the reputational damage its activities in the South China Sea have caused since the beginning of this year, we can probably rule out this possibility. The second is aircraft maintenance issues. Operating fighter aircraft at sea poses problems due to salt in the sea spray and high humidity, both of which can cause metal corrosion. However, U.S. aircraft carriers deal with this issue all the time, and in any case China has constructed large hangars on its artificial islands, some of which are probably air-conditioned. Besides, a few days' deployment to Fiery, Subi, or Mischief Reef would not impose much wear and tear on play of fighter jets, which could quickly be washed down with fresh water. The third possible reason, if true, poses a more serious problem for Chinese defense planners, that the structural integrity of the facilities on the artificial islands, including the airstrips, is suboptimal, and the playoff is therefore wary of using them. Reclamation work at Subi Reef began in early 2014, but before the dredging was even completed, construction had already started on the runways and support facilities. The runway on Subi was completed by mid-2016. The usual industry practice would have been to allow the reclaimed land to settle for months or even years before beginning construction. To do otherwise leads to the possibility of subsidence. Japan's Kansai Airport, also constructed on an artificial island, has suffered from this problem since it opened in 1994, despite extensive remedial engineering work. Doubts about the structural integrity of the artificial islands are amplified when the issue of corruption is considered. 
Despite President Xi Jinping's anti-graph campaign, corruption in China remains endemic, including in the military-industrial complex. For instance, in July 2019, Su Bo, who oversaw the construction of China's first domestically produced aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, was convicted of corruption and jailed for 12 years. And in May 2020, Hu Wenming, the head of China's aircraft carrier construction program, was arrested and charged with corruption and passing secrets to foreign powers. Corruption in the building industry leads to shortcuts and shoddy construction. Beyond logistics, there are technological limitations. The airstrips on the artificial islands, while suitable for some aircraft, are not ideal for high-intensity fighter jet operations. The length and construction quality of the runways may not support the heavy takeoff and landing requirements of advanced fighter jets like the J-20 or J-16. Furthermore, the lack of advanced maintenance facilities and hangars on these islands means that any technical issues with the aircraft cannot be addressed on-site. This limitation forces China to rely on mainland bases for significant repairs, further complicating their operational capabilities. The inability to deploy fighter jets to the Spratly Islands has broader geopolitical implications. For one, it limits China's ability to enforce its claims and challenge other nations' presence in the region. This limitation also affects China's strategic calculations, potentially leading to increased reliance on naval and missile forces to project power. Additionally, it affects the regional balance of power. Neighboring countries, backed by the United States, might see this as an opportunity to strengthen their own positions in the South China Sea, leading to heightened tensions and potential conflicts. China is undoubtedly aware of these challenges and is likely working on solutions. Possible measures could include enhancing logistical support through better supply chains, investing in technology to mitigate environmental impacts, and improving the infrastructure on the artificial islands. However, these solutions are not without their own set of challenges and will take time to implement. The future of China's ability to project air power in the Spratly Islands remains uncertain and will be a critical factor in the ongoing geopolitical chess game in the South China Sea. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others interested in global security and geopolitical issues. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so leave a comment below. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe.